So welcome to NG Fishing. So uh, today I'm just going to run you through a short video. I've had a few questions about pole fishing and particularly top kits. So I'm going to run through two of my current top kits um, and just talk you through a few things in terms of how to elasticate them um, and sort of what elastics to use. So I've basically got two top kits on me today. Um, one's, one is set up what I would class as traditional, um, as a more of a traditional setup. So if I grab that one first, move that one out of the way. So this is, this is set up more traditionally. So what there is in here um, is there's a bung. It sits about, sits sort of round here somewhere. Um, and you can get like a rod. I've got one in my shed. That you, you push down there, you screw it in, pull it out. So that's a fixed bung to elastic. Now this is, this tends to be my setup, traditional style. A big carp if i'm honest um so this is this is my my big carp rig so i've got really thick this is i think this is an 18 elastic on here this is for when i'm uh hook hook and hold fishing basically when i'm fishing down the edge you know there might be a snag nearby a stump or something like that um this tends to be my i don't tend to go straight on this if i lose a few on the other setup which i'll show you shortly this is what this is what I end up going on. So this is an uh, yeah sixteen to eighteen elastic in there. Um, it's a um, adrenon pole adapter. I quite like these. They're good with the thick elastics. Um, and basically, all you do for this setup is run the elastic through. And what I would recommend for years, I would sit there just trying to push the elastic through, and you get there eventually. But the last time I needed to do a couple of top kits, I bought one of these. It's a diamond threader. Loads of them on the market. They're really cheap, to be honest. They're like a quid, maybe two pounds at the most. Because it's made of metal, you thread that down. It just goes straight down. Pop your elastic in this little loop at the end. I don't know if you can, the camera's picking it up. Thread it down to the bottom. Put your elastic in. Fire it all the way through happy days very it makes life so much easier so right uh, back onto that so i've threaded the elastic through um once it's through this end what i tend to do because this is just a single elastic with this single solid elastic on here i tend to tie my connector on the way i do that if i pull this apart for you i don't know if you'll see that up on the camera but what I what I tend to do is I just get the elastic together like that, make a loop in it, and pass the adapter over that, and then back round like a lasso, and then with the tag end, I always put a little overhand knot in the tag end like that, just in case. I've never had it happen before. It's more of a confidence thing, just in case that slips never had it slip before um but that's just my backup and i mean this setup i've had carp over 20 pound fishing down the edge with a nice thick elastic and using this is the drennan um pole adapters that is my standard i would class it as traditional pole fishing elastication so i've got a single solid elastic running through the pole to a standard pole adapter okay that is traditional elasticated setup my next setup i'm going to show you is a little bit different again i've gone with i've actually in this pole at the moment i'm fishing with a solid elastic again and i'm fishing it single you can see the adapter on the end is a lot smaller because it's a lighter elastic. Oh, no, this isn't a solid, sorry. This is actually a bungee. This is bungee. So this is a hydro elastic. So it's a hollow cord elastic. What you find with a hollow core elastic is they stretch a lot more. So I'll start on this. I start in some big ones and I lose them, which does happen on this setup because the elastic can just it stretches quite a lot. I think this is an, an eight in the bungee i think this is an eight which is adrenaline elastic again um 
that's a single single but what really helps when you're fishing either a hollow which is what i've got in here if you're new to pole fishing i'd recommend don't go and buy a hollow it's going to cost you a fortune you're looking you know, 10 quid for a decent hollow elastic what i used to do and i have on a couple of my other top kits um, is use a double elastic and the setup will be exactly the same if you look there you can see the end of the elastic now this is a this is called a puller bung so basically it allows you to use the stretch of your elastic and this is where puller, puller bungs come into their own when you're fishing either a hydro like a a um When you're fishing like a hydro based elastic a hollow based elastic or a double elastic and i'll get onto that shortly basically what it allows you to do is when you've got a fish you've hooked a carp in particular carp and it's taking you to the other side of the lake you can basically once you get down to your top kit you can then take the elastic here and you can pull it and what that's doing is that's to put more tension into the elastic which means it's going to be less stretch which means you can play the fish and hopefully if you're lucky turn them and that's that's for me personally i cannot I, I would recommend if you're gonna fish a hollow you need to use a puller kit another great technique if you're fishing mixed fisheries hollows work well because of that stretch you know you might have a small f1 a couple of bream skimmers all of a sudden you hit a big carp by having that you've got the flexibility yeah if i was just to fish on the solid setup that I showed you earlier, those 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 roach skimmers, bream F ones, maybe even might bump off because there's not that give in the elastic designed for those big brutes. So in terms of fishing for a double elastic, I would use exactly the same setup, but you would run, you would get your elastic out, tie a knot in the end, again, use your thread threader. Run that down, fold the elastic in half so you found your middle point, fire it all the way up to the top, add your connector, then pop it through your puller bung. So this one's a bit of a mess because this has been in a couple of top kits. So with a puller bung, you've got a bung here and then you've got this tube and then you get your, your bead. This is again a Drennan one. The idea being that that sits there you can then your number three section will go that will sit between the number three section that's why you've got to make sure when you when you when you're making and doing a kit like this get your number three section don't cut the uh, the bung down with these with these ones um until unless you can't sort of get the top the number three in but then you can tweak around a little bit personally i use them straight out the packet I know that that's definitely long enough. It might mean you have to trim the bung end down rather than the tube. But to me, that's that's better to trim that down than to play around with the tube. Because you could get to a point there where you can't get your number three section in. So again, on to the double. You've run, you've run your elastic all the way through. You've tied off the end with a pole kick, um, a pole adapter, and then you've added the bead and a knot on the end. Basically, what I use... The knot on the end I use is what I refer to as a spider knot. So there was there was a bit of a craze a few years ago with pole fishing where actually people were using a spider knot on the end and rather than a, a pole adapter they were using a spider knot on there as well. I was a bit kind of I wasn't a fan of that to be honest. Just talking about uh, pole connectors so you want to match the pole connector to your elastic so again that's a nice small one there um, if you're getting into pole fishing for the first time, <coughs> what I would recommend is I actually would recommend not using uh, a traditional style pole connector. And there's several reasons for that. Um, they, they are known to wrapping. So when you're shipping out for the first time, um, you won't be as smooth as some of the guys um, that have been doing it for ages. So you might you know get your, your hook length wrapped around your rig all wrapped on there but there's an easy way to sort that out a lot of people use these themselves experienced fishermen as well so and that is using what's called a dacron connector so i've got a packet of dacron connectors there okay 
and basically what you've got dacron is basically um it's fly backing it's backing used for fly fishing so it's quite stiff and what you find if you pop that on you pop that on it automatically is very stiff and you know, hopefully you can see that on there it pushes away so you imagine that on the elastic there it's very stiff and it's going to point away so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to show you now how i would attach a dacron connect to, the, to this uh, and i'm going to remove that and i'll use that another time so the most simplest way is just to tie it on so what i would do take some of your elastic so you remember you threaded that elastic through there it's going to be like that's going to be very loose so it's going to be very easy for you guys to do and then tie it off at the end i find it's easier to take take it off the end for your final adjustment i do find that a lot easier so you've got your elastic like so we're going to make a loop okay now make sure you moisten your elastic when tying any knot in elastic you've got to make sure it's wet if not what will happen is you will burn the elastic and it won't last so long so i've got a loop I pass the Dacron through there, and then I'm going to pass the knot end of it through, so it's just lassoed on basically, like so. Keep it really moist, keep it moist. If it's not moist, like I said, you'll burn it, damage your, 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 your elastic. All right, it's that simple. Look how simple that is, yeah. Then what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to tie at the back end one overhand knot like so. So it goes round like that. Push it all through. Very straightforward. So overhand knot. Plenty of saliva. And then just pull that tight. So you're pulling down on that knot. What you don't want to do is you don't want to cause the elastic to go white and then what we're going to do is we're going to take some scissors if i know where i've put them if not you can bite it but i'm not going to recommend it to you guys because i'm not going to pay your dentist bill just so like that that's how i like to do it so i've got lassoed knot then you take the sleeve again really moisten that elastic down take that sleeve and just slide that over the lot so it's over the join and over the knot just take your time with it okay there we go like that and you can see now what i mean see that that's kicking away where where this one here traditional pole connector it's kicking away slightly and these what these ones from drennan are really really good to be honest with you um but when you look at the difference there you know when you're shipping out that's stiff very stiff and it's it's it's, it's uh it does make life a lot easier when shipping out so that's my quick run through guys on my top kits at the moment i mean i've got this is just for my margin pole at the moment. I tend to be just using an eight meter. Um, with a 16, my 16 meter, I'm, you know, I've got light elastics mainly for my, my silverfish fishing, which I'll probably look at soon, ready for the winter, you know, fishing maggot and stuff out for small, small roach and whatnot. But yeah, that's just me showing you how I elasticate my top kits. Um, very, very simple, very, very straightforward. Once you've done it once, you'll be absolutely fine. The key is, get yourself a diamond threader. Yeah. If, you've, if you're new to pole fishing, pack of Dacrons. I mean, they're not expensive. You know, like I said, that's a pack of three. You can go down the road of a bungee, of a, like bungee um, Drennan ones. In terms of elastics, um, I tend to use, in a double, I would tend to, it, it does vary depending on where you're fishing. Uh, I like a double five, six, and eight. Um, six, uh, fives are for your roach, very, very small carp. Uh, double six, when you're catching like F1s, things like that. You're going up to bigger carp, like doubles, then I'd go for a double eight. 
if you were going to go for a, 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 um, a hollow elastic, I would be looking, um, again, depending on where you're fishing. Um, at the moment, I'm using the yellow, the yellow bungee from Drenum, which is a hollow elastic. I think that's around an 8 or, or might even be a 12. Um, and again, in my power, my other top kit, I'm fishing a 16. I think it's a 16 to 18. I think that's a midi elastic in there. Um, so in terms of brands, I do like the Preston, the Preston and Solids, very good. Obviously the Drennan, I, I, I've never used the Drennan Solid. I don't know if they do a solid. I think they only do the bungee now, um, which is the hollow. That's very good. Uh, the um, Marva Solid Elastic is very, very good as well. So I tend to use Preston, Marva or Midi for solids. And if I want a, like a, a hollow elastic, I tend to use the bungee. Um, in the past, I have used Hydro, which is by uh, Daiwa. Um, the problem I've had with Hydro is it's ridiculously expensive. You know, you start doing, you, you want to put that through two kits, you're looking at 15 quid. Um, yeah, something like the Preston, you know, for years I was using Preston 5 in one of my match kits. Um, and that was costing me three quid. And I was, you know, one bumpy fish off and, and catching really well on it. So, yeah, it's, it's just, the choice is up to you, really, guys. Put a thing in the description if you want any more um, any more advice on elastics. It does depend on where you're fishing. Um, one more thing, um, when fishing, fishing the pole in particular, it's slightly off subject a little bit, but whilst I've got you on here, is about baiting. Um, and... The beauty of fishing a pole is you can bait so accurately to where you want to fish um, if you use a cup. So this is a paste cup from Guru. Again, really, really nice. I'll take my one of my top kits. This comes into its own when you're fishing, for, fishing with paste. What I do like about this is they really have thought about it. You've got a massive, you've got a large bore there. And then the other side, you've got a short bore. So when I'm fishing paste... I tend to have have a bit of a gap and create a bow. Helps when uh, fishing paste, because obviously you're shipping it out. That way prevents tangles. But a great way of also putting bait in. Um, another one I've got here is little little Maver pot. I think they call it a toss pot or something. Um, now these clip. They click onto the top kit, and then you've slide them down again you know it's a very simple design not not too expensive either but definitely something to have in your armory or oh, there's this so it definitely seemed better days and i definitely could do with making another one but this is one i made myself very very simple and for you guys elasticating your top kits all that is there is a bit of elastic that i had from when i've uh, tightened up the end so all I've got there this is a lid off uh, a shaving foam believe it or not and all I've done is I've cut two little squares out which line up with the pole like so and then all I do is take the elastic around the pole like that there you go solid and the beauty of this one in particular over the ones that I've bought is I can put this, this can go right on the end. So when you pop that in and you drop your rig straight off the tip, you know you are on your bait spot on. So really good little tip, very, very simple to make. Um, just cut the two square, two, two little gaps just so the pole sits in it. That stops it sort of sliding around too much. And then a couple of, a hole under each side and a little bit of elastic. Very, very simple, but very, very effective. So that's it just for, for talking about top kits, sort of how to bait accurately with the pots. Pole fishing is amazing. I absolutely love it. Very, very simple. Once, you, once you've had a go at sort of elasticating, you know, I know people, even my... I know people that really struggle with it. Um, even my even my own dad struggles with it. To be honest with you, I find it quite straightforward. It's definitely worth buying one of those. Buying one of those and buying your your Dacrons. 
Um, one of the things I would say about the bungee, what is good about the bungee from Drennan is actually you get a kit. So the kit is you, you actually get the elastic and you get your connector. So, um, but again, it's probably more cost effective to buy the components. One thing I didn't touch on uh, with the pole tip, which I should mention, um, is about the PCFE. So for those of you who don't know what that is, obviously if you're cutting, if you've got a brand new top kit that's not come complete and you're cutting it back for your elastic, be very careful and use a hacksaw and take your time little and often to get to that point. But most of the time, poles come already done. But if they don't, you're going to need to buy what's called a PTFE. So basically, it's that little cap at the top, um, the back, uh, black on both of my top kits, unfortunately. So you just, I don't know if you can pick that up. And basically what that does, this is a um, an external one. So that slides over and it basically, it aids the elastic. When it comes out, it keeps it smooth. It protects the elastic from any sharp edges. Uh, you can get ones that slide into the pole externally. Uh, these ones are externally. So if you don't have one of them, don't run elastic through there until you've put one on. Because all you'll end up doing is, it's like taking your elastic and running it over a knife. You're just going to cut it and damage it. So that's, that's a very quick guide in top kits. If you do have any questions, guys, please send me a message. I hope I hope that sort of makes sense to you. Um, obviously, it would have been nice if I'd had some elastic. If I hadn't redone my polls recently, I could have um, shown you how to do it. But unfortunately, I have. Um, so there you go, guys. Order one of those. Get yourself some connectors. Get yourself an elastic. Um, if you're going light again make sure you're going for a puller bung um again i think that's a, that's a drenon one i've got in there but you've got the drenon you've got the preston ones those two are my favorite when it comes to the puller bungs if i'm honest um the same the same thing could happen with that setup there you could do the same thing there with the elastic if it's one of these fancy new poles that have got a side puller so a side puller has got a hole in the pole and basically you need a diamond threader, thread up that way, so pull the elastic through coming out of there. And again, you can do the same with the, with the Dacron or pole connector. So there you go, guys. I hope I haven't confused anyone. If you do have any questions, please put them um, in the comments or message me on Facebook. Also, we're running a competition at the moment on the NG Fishing Baits page. So if you head over to that, basically we've started a reward system for customers um if you sign up to the award system you get entered into a draw in the draw you're going to get your hands on a pack of our six mil a pack of the eight mil a pack of our micro pellet also you're going to get a bag of our new pva bag mix which is really really good for solid bags but actually dampening it down fishing it down the edge works just as well as well so there you go guys if you've got any questions pop them in the things below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can until the next time guys enjoy your fishing